Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you choose to join me for another mat class with weights. I continue to just have the two pounders. I also have a folding chair for today's class. So that's actually where we're going to begin. I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you for joining me again. I'm gonna come and have a seat on the chair facing you for a moment. I'll just turn the chair appropriately. All right, so from here, we're just gonna have a seat wherever you feel the most comfortable. You don't wanna sit too far in the chair and you don't wanna sit too far forward in the chair. So find a way where you can be off of the back part of the chair and off of the front edge of the chair, where you can just let your arms kind of hang with the two pounders. Last time we started with a lot of tapping and that is something I've already done this morning. So I thought I would advise you to pause this video and start with a bunch of tapping and kind of releasing, side bending, all of that stuff. So. On that note, we're gonna start with three full breath cycles just to bring a little awareness into our session. So here we go. We're just gonna take a nice inhale. And exhale. For those three inhales and exhales, you're just going to let those arm bones that have the two pound hand weights just float out in front of you, sitting as tall as you can, and then let them fall back down. Just very simple. How am I allowing the low belly to float my arms up rather than thinking of the wrist, the elbow, and the shoulder doing all the work? The wrist is happy, the elbow's happy, the shoulder's happy. And it's really easy to allow the arm bones to kind of come a little forward of the shoulder, but allow the arm to rest in the nest that the body automatically has for us. And yes, I turned profile so you could visualize it. And paying attention to the knees being directly over the heels rather than the shin being too far behind or the foot being behind the knee. Just allow all of those aspects to be kind. So bringing awareness, heads floating right over the spine, low belly's lifted, chest is soft into your back, eyes are soft in a panoramic vision. I have two more here wondering how many is she going to do? It's just to kind of help warm up how my arm bones are moving gently in the socket. So now I'm gonna come back to face you. Once again, feet are directly under the knees, heels are directly under the knees, and I'm going to take my arms out to the sides towards a T and then lower back down. Remember, it's, it's, duh, it's not about how high you lift, it's about how easy is it as you lift. So if your arm range of motion, shoulder range of motion is a little lower, it's nothing to be judgmental about. So not going to judge you, so don't judge yourselves. Remember, be kind in your thoughts. It's all about being present for this moment at this particular time for today. I don't know how many more, let's say three more, just for good measure. And I know last week I went way over, so today I'm going to try to manage my time appropriately. I promise I will do my best. And then we relax again. And now we're just going to let the right shoulder shrug towards the ears, release. Left shoulder shrug towards the ear, release. Right, down, left, down. Right, up, left, up. Right, up, left, up. And then right, left, 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 right, left. Last one. Ah, good. And now I'm going to let the hand weights kind of rest on top of my thigh bones, mostly to kind of allow my thigh bones to get a little 
heavier, but I'm floating away from my thigh bones, from my pelvis. Arms are going to go wide side to side. And I want to start with a big rotation. So I'm going to keep the arm bones at 180 degrees away from each other. I'm going to let my head, neck, and eyes and my upper body rotate right. And then I come back to center. Same thing for the other side. My head, neck, and eyes go with me. And my arms are staying in that same side to side adventure they were in when you come back to a T. The right arm doesn't go any far forward as the body twists left, and the left arm doesn't go any far forward as the body twists right. I know. Last one, both sides. Excellent. And then let the arms fall back down. So now we're going to do a few things with the upper body, with the moving of the arm bones, and then we'll add the hand weights to it. About five of them, different things. So here's my palms turned up. Elbows are hanging by the sides. And then from here, I'm just going to go to a folded goalpost position. From the folded goalpost, I open the goalpost, reach the arms overhead without the upper traps being invited, bend back into that goalpost, fold the goalpost back down, tuck the elbows back in. So opening the arm bones, opening the goalpost, reaching the arms up above, folding back into goalpost, folding it down to face the earth, and then let the elbows tuck. Here's number three. Breathe easy. Four. And five. Excellent. So now grab your hand weights. Remember, all of this is A-OK -okay without the hand weight. So my palms are turned up and I've got my weights kind of free in my hand, no death grip. I'm going to open the goalpost. I mean, I'm going to open the arms out to the side, fold a goalpost, open the goalpost, reach the arms overhead, bend the goalpost, fold the goalpost, tuck the elbows in. And I'm not going to keep repeating. I'm just going to keep going for it. And I'm going for 12 repetitions if that's available. Remember, nothing is a must. I'm on five already. Eight. Nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Excellent. So, why did we focus so much on all of that upper body? Just so we can open things up and learn how to sit taller with ease because we're getting ready to go into a lot of mat related emphasis with hand weights if you choose to, without hand weights if you don't feel like it. Open your legs as wide as they can go. And this should remind you of spine stretch forward. I'm gonna let the palms face my body and I'm just gonna nod my chin and roll my way down, leaving my tail and my bum on the chair as far forward to just open my back into spine, stretch forward. And then I'm gonna let the weight dangle from my wrists and then roll my way back up, the head being the last thing to come up on top of my neck and my spine. Same thing again, three more times. Two more times. And one more. Very nice. So now I'm going to let the hand weights actually go down to the earth and go into a twisted rotational component similar to saw. I'm going to take my right hand to the left side of my leg, foot, wherever it reaches. My left hand goes somewhere on the chair behind me. I'm just thinking of letting my pelvis tuck towards my nose a little to open the right side of the small of my back and pushing my leg into my hand and my hand into my leg, so to speak, just to give me a different traction for the left 
leg and right hand. And then I'm going to come back. And now same love for the other side. So I'm going to take my right hand to the outside of left hand to the outside of my right leg, right hand somewhere behind on the chair, easy head and neck position, curl your tailbone towards your nose. So we'll pelvic tilt to open the small of my back up a little bit more. And then I come back up. So one more time, same emphasis, each side. I went a little higher on the leg this time, just to get a little higher stretch across the middle of my back. And then I go to the other side. Excellent. So now I'm gonna come off of the chair, turn the chair to where you can see it. And I'm gonna come show you my bum for a moment. Sorry about that. So I've got my hand weights. Oh, let's move this a little further just so you have a better view. There we go. All right, so now from here, my hand weights are just along the sides of my thigh bones. Finding my awareness, head floating. I'm gonna try to think about weight shifting into the left foot and bring the right foot in line with the right hip on top of the chair. And then once again, paying similar attention that you haven't let the knee go too far forward. The heel hasn't come off on the right foot. All corners of the right foot talking. And now if you want to, you're just going to allow your whole left side of your body to lunge forward towards the right leg and knee for a moment. Left heel can come off and then you come back on top of that left heel. So finding your left bum again. We have five. Load our heel up from our inner ankle, inner leg, inner thigh. It's like we're telling our body it's okay to fall a little forward, lunging towards the right thigh bone and bump. And one more. Keeping it here. And now the palms turn back if you have the hand weights. Tiny movement back and back and back and back and back. Last two, one, and then we come back and take that right foot off, shake it off. Okay, I hope that went well. Ah, I can hear it. Yes, you guys are saying it went great. I don't know about you, but I feel so much longer on the left front of my thigh bone already. So my right side saying, can I please have some attention? All right, now that we've gotten that taken care of, we're gonna bring the left foot on top of the chair. It's really easy for my body to hang out in the corner of the right thigh bone. So I'm going to float myself up on top of that right bum and heel connection. And then from there, I'm going to float my body weight forward as I float the right heel off and flow, relax it back down. So it's a tiny lunge as I lift my right heel and I come back down. Almost a tiny trust fall forward with a soft chest, you're thinking of an internal sternum fold to keep the chest soft into your back. Because as you know, the diaphragm starts way back here at the bottom of the ribs and it wraps around to the front. Last two. And one more. You keep it, the palms turn back and seven tiny pumps back. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, and then lower the heel, come back. Excellent. So now use the hand weights or don't use the hand weights. We're going to go into sitting and getting back up, maintaining the form. We're hinging from top of the thigh bone. The arms can help if they counter go counterweight in front of you, you'll be able to find your seat a little happier. So remember the head and neck do not really change. You're just gonna fold, have a seat, and come back up to standing. Lead with your bum. Ideally, the legs and the heels are in the same position. The knee has not gone forward of the heels. Arms can do whatever they need. They can swing as you go into sitting and getting up. How many are we going for? Just 15. I'm gonna pay attention to time.
There's my 15. Very nice. So now we're done with the chair. I'm going to move the chair completely out of the way for me. And then I'm going to come and have a seat on my mat. But I'm going to use what I just learned from hinging from the top of my thigh bones to go into a really, really deep chair pose and then have a seat. I know you're thinking that's a little bit of a challenge. Don't worry, it gets easier the more we try and do something. So don't scold yourself, find your way down onto the mat however you can, and then take a moment. How do you feel at this point? Do you feel like you're sitting tall? Are you able to maintain your tall posture without having to let your neck stick out or your neck tuck down? And you allow the head and neck to have a bobble at all times. You've got the hand weights in front of you if you keep, if you want them. If not, ditch them, arms out in front of you. Pelvic tilt. Pause in your pelvic tilt. Let the weight of the weights and the arms fall down towards the earth on an inhale. Exhale, float them up. Inhale, they fall. So they float. And I have my weights nestled between the thumb and the index finger crease of my hand, just because that way I can't have a death grip. When you're thinking, how many more are we going here? A few more. Last two. And one more. Now keep it there. Let your elbows bend, knuckles kiss. Remember rowing from last week? We're going to continue some of it. Let the arms go out to the sides, palms turn away. Dive forward, letting the weights go behind you. Let the weights kind of fall down to the earth. Can you get a little deeper pelvic tilt and lift the arms back up? Inhale. Yeah, exhale. Get deeper in that low belly wall, hugging your low back. Three more. Two more, one more. Lift the arms all the way out around in front of you and then come back to having a seat as tall as you can. Take a breath in. I'm gonna move a little bit over onto the middle. Exhale, same start. We totally tilt again. Arms out to the sides, palms turn away. We dive over on top of our thigh bones. And then this time, we're gonna let the right arm lift up Turn and look at that right arm. Take it all the way down in front of you. Let the right arm reach next to the side of the right leg, foot, wherever it lands. And then turn and look at your left hand behind you. Take a breath in. Exhale, lift that left arm up and lower. And how are you looking at that left hand? Have you dropped your head? Try not to. Here's number three. One more. One more. Now lift that arm up and all the way around to the side of your left leg foot, wherever it lands. Come back to sitting nice and tall. Take a breath in. Exhale, elbows bend, knuckles kiss, pelvic tilt again. Pause, arms out to the sides, palms turn away. You dive over, reaching, reaching, reaching. Once again, the palms and the back of the hands landed. We're going to lift that left arm up. Turn and look at it as it goes all the way somewhere towards the left leg and foot area. And then we turn and look at that right hand and we lift it up on an exhale, lower it down. Same thing, don't allow your head to fall too far forward. Always allow yourself to have a top test. That will tell you that your airway's open. It's the most important thing we do for ourselves, which is breathing. Last one, lift the arm up all the way out in front of you. Give yourself that one more opportunity for spine stretch forward. Come back to sitting nice and tall. Take a breath in. Exhale, pelvic tilt, elbows wide, knuckles kiss. Pause here. We're just going to lengthen the arm bones out in front of us as we lengthen the arm bones and the hands reach out. And then exhale, the arm bones lift up towards the sky without the upper traps, and they fall all the way down in front of you. They float up towards the sky, and they fall down. We have five all together. Here's number three. Hope you can hear the quiver in my breath. Woo! I love when I get deep, deep, deep. Keep it on the fifth one, if available. Curl all the way back and roll all the way down onto your back. Arms are just directly over your chest, palms facing each other. You take an inhale. 
If a roll up is in your practice, that's where we're headed to. Exhale, fold, curl your head, neck, and shoulders forward. Arms can go towards the sides of your thigh bones, and then you roll your way up. If you if a roll up is not in your practice and you do one leg roll up, meet me after you re repeat two on each side. So we'll all do four together. I'm gonna choose both leg roll up. I'm gonna let my arms go behind me somewhere. Lift them back up, curl my head, neck, and shoulders, peeling my way off of the earth. Like I'm inviting each vertebra to find a different place to live in and get broader. And I'm envisioning that I'm finding even more length every single time. Taking my time, enjoying the process of relaxing and opening up my back. I'm just on number three. I'm going to walk a little bit more forward on the mat. Curl back. This time I'm going to leave my arms back behind me. That was my fourth roll. Uh, no, I need to roll up first and then I'll roll back down. Sorry, this is my fourth one. So we have an extra roll down. And if available, the arms stay behind you. If that's not available with the ribs staying happy, then goalpost is another option. Wherever you are, be happy. So the arms by your sides is also an option. Wherever you can keep the bottom of the ribs staying down on the ground. I am nice and open this morning since I've already had quite a bit already. So now we're going to take it into leg circles, right? Leg floats up towards the sky. And we just go into six circles one way, six circles the other way. My right foot is slightly flexed. My left foot is slightly flexed. Different thought, back, thought process today for both feet being flexed. And then I reverse the direction of the circles. And the circles are predicated by how easy it is rather than trying to make it so large that it, it makes the other hip come off the ground. Once you have your sixth one, both directions, let that right leg go. Oh, I already feel so much longer on the right front of the hip. Isn't that crazy? And then the left leg rolls into the back of the socket. Excellent. And then we go into circles. Six circles one way, six circles the other way. Just breathe, enjoy, relax. Whatever you do, be kind in your thoughts. Six and then six the other way. And just remind yourself of how awesome you are for showing up for yourself for this moment of self-care. And then we release that leg back down, take another inhale. Now the hand weights that I have behind me, I'm just gonna get them off of my hands. I'm gonna bring my arms all the way down towards the sides of my thigh bones. Exhale to curl my head, neck, and shoulders forward. Right leg comes directly over the hip. Left leg comes directly over the hip. I'm gonna take it right into 100s. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Toy with the idea of how low can the legs go without the low back changing shape. I'm on my sixth breath cycle. Are you still able to speak clearly? Are you still able to breathe easy? Yes, I'm quivering, but I can still speak and breathe easy. So that's important. Ninth breath cycle. Tenth breath cycle. Pause. Hug your knees into your chest. Relax your head, neck, and shoulders forward. Just give yourself a nice squish for the front of that chest abdominal area, wherever your thighs land. Relax the shoulders as much as possible. And then from there, bring one leg into tabletop, other leg into tabletop. Arms go wide side to side. We're just going to go into spine twist, lying on our back for a moment. We let the left hip lift off and roll on top of the right hip as we go right. And we come back to center. We let the right hip lift up and roll on top of the left hip as we go left and we come back. Whatever breath floats your boat, 
honor your body's requests. Try to keep the top of the shoulder that you're rolling away from on the ground as much as possible. Last one, both sides. Now bring your knees towards your chest. Curl your head, neck, and shoulders forward. Take it right into rolling like a ball. Use a little momentum and then roll. Roll all the way up to sitting and curl back to the tip of the shoulder. Head and neck don't touch and feet don't touch, if that's possible. Wherever you are, pause once you come up and then roll almost to the edge of the shoulder and pause there. Single leg stretch, here we come. We're going to let the left knee come as close to our nose as possible and then switch leg. Close to our nose as possible, switch leg. Close. <sighs> Hug. Think of the leg really rolling smooth. Envision how well the thigh bone is rolling smooth. If you don't like bending your knee this deep, then only go to where it feels comfortable. We have one more each side. <sighs> Both legs go up. Relax your head, neck, and shoulders down for a moment. You've got your hands somewhere behind your thigh bones. Take an inhale to prepare. Exhale, curl back up. Let your arms go directly towards the ears, next to the ears. Both arms and legs go away from each other. And then the arms circle as you hug your knees in. Double leg stretch. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Last one. Pause there. Another momentum changer to rolling like a ball. And then roll all the way up. Send your legs as wide. We take it into spine stretch forward, seated on the earth this time instead of the chair. Arms out in front of you. Palms can be turned up to the sky, down facing each other. You nod your chin. Puff the middle of your upper back. Puff the middle back. Puff the low back. Low belly lifts into the space of your small of your back. And then you roll your way to float right over those sit bones. Take a breath in. Exhale, nod. Keep going as far forward. And then breathe in. Exhale to roll back up. Just two more. One more. Excellent. Let's bring the legs toward each other. They don't have to kiss, but as close to each other as possible. I'm going to do spine twist in a different variation. I'm going to bring my hands behind me. The thumbs are somewhere right behind the earlobes. Elbows are slightly forward. Feet flex, sitting as tall as I can. I'm going to twist towards the left. Inhale, 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 exhale, center. Inhale, 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 right, exhale, center. Inhale, left, three, center. Inhale, right, two, three, center. Inhale, left, two, three, center. Exhale, left, two, three, center. Whatever breath feels good. Once more each side. And then come back to center. Let your legs separate away from each other again. I know my hair is going everywhere today. Just one moment. Let your legs go as wide as they can. Curl back from your tailbone and your sit bone. Drag your right leg and foot right behind the crease of the right thigh bone. And then drag your left leg and fold behind the left thigh bone. Stretch both legs up to the sky in this wide position. Bend both legs back down. Open like rockers where we're headed to, but we're trying to find that happy medium of how the thigh bones can roll deep into the back of the pelvis and how can this encourage our pelvic tilt to stay in that soft, wide pelvic floor space. Last one, keep the legs long if available. Move your hands to the ankles if that's in your practice or stay right where you were. You can do this with bent leg. Here we go, open leg rocker. We rock back to the tip of the shoulder and we roll back up. Or we take a couple of breaths to do so. Here we go. Inhale, rock back. Exhale, rock up. Inhale, rock back. Exhale, rock up. Last two. Whew. 
Pause there, bring the legs toward each other. Last week, I kind of skipped out on teaser. So here's our teaser opportunity. Inhale, roll back, the legs came toward each other. Exhale, roll up. And my legs end up bending a little and I'm not gonna care about that because I wanna be kind to the top of the thigh bones here. We're just going for two more guys. One more. <sighs> Excellent. Take the soles of your feet together, knees wide open, and just breathe. Ah, <sighs> very nice. All right, I don't know if you remember, we did a lot of different things with our side lying sequencing that last time. We'll head there this time also. So we're gonna roll off to our side. I'm gonna grab my two pounders. I'm gonna grab both of them in one hand. I'm gonna lie on my left side of my thigh bone and I'm gonna be on my forearm today instead of lying all the way down or slumping into my shoulder. I'm up and out of the shoulder. Elbow is a little in front of my shoulder. Head and neck happy in line with my tail. Chest soft into my back. Right leg long, left leg bent. So now I'm just going to take my right arm with the two two-pounders and rest it on top of that right thigh bone. I'm going to try not to change much of anything. Head and neck happy. But I'm going to reach that right leg so far away from the right ear and float it off the ground and then let it fall back down. Just that part. And now after five, and release. So that was five for me. I'm going to let that leg lift off. I'm going to let the arm float up as far up towards the sky. And then I'm going to let it fall back down on top of that right thigh bone. And that right thigh bone and leg are floating. And I'm still up and out of that left shoulder, head and neck happy. And this is a ton of side body related emphasis. So please be mindful and kind to your neck. That was five. And now we go into our kick, kick forward, kick, kick back. I'm going to bend at the right elbow, kick the right leg forward and point it back. Flex it forward, point it back. I just have my weights in my hand doing nothing with the weights. Here's five coming up. I'm going to let that right leg fall. I'm going to reach my right arm long somewhere out in front of me. As I reach that right hand with the hand weights off, and remember weights are optional, we're going to float both our right leg and right hand off the ground, and then we let it fall. And I've twisted towards the left hand a little bit. Head, neck, and eyes still soft. Subtle pelvic tilt to keep the small of my back happy. And here's five. Excellent. I'm going to try my best to remember all of these things. So now from there, I'm going to ditch the hand weights for a moment. I'm going to reach behind me towards my right leg just to stretch the front of that right thigh bone a little bit more and twist towards the left. Same up and out of that shoulder for five full breath cycles. Excellent. So I'm gonna let that go. I'm gonna twist and put both forearms down on the ground. Let my eyes look slightly forward. And my right leg is on the ground. I'm gonna reach it off the ground. Five circles, five, four, three, two, one, and five, four, three, two, one. Excellent, and then release everything back down. So same, same thought process, keeping the left leg in front of you, right leg back. We just go into our mermaid, arms out to the side. So we're gonna go towards the right side first. So the right hand just lands wherever it lands. Left arm goes up and over, right shoulder happy. And then we come back, left hand lands towards the side of the left hip, thigh bone, wherever. Left elbow bends to help you keep the left shoulder happy. We breathe into the right side of the body. Same thing, five times.
one more. How are we gonna come to the other side? We're gonna bring the left leg out in front of you, use your hands, bring the right leg out in front of you, roll over onto your right side, and then we come back down. I know I was a little nice to you by letting you use your hands. Right knee is in front of the right hip, and we're propped on our right forearm, meaning the right elbow under the right shoulder and the right side body lifted towards the left side body. Left leg nice and long, both weights in one hand. Weights are optional, by the way, remember that. And we're on our right side, so here we go. We're lifted up and out of the shoulder, head and neck floating, side body nice and long, left hip directly on top of the right hip. Pretend you have a wall behind you and that'll help you find your long, long connection. From there, we float that left leg as we reach it away and let it fall, five of those. And five. Good. So now we're going to lift that leg. Keep it lifted. Left arm lifts up as high as the body allows. And you lower it back down. And I'm just thinking, how can I go really broad from underarm to underarm, staying up and out of that right shoulder? And here's five. Excellent. Now the hand, the hand, the elbows bend. The elbow bends, <laughs> kick, kick forward, and kick, kick back. Nothing with the arm. Flex the foot as it goes forward, point it as it goes back. Last one. Keep it there. Let that left hand reach somewhere in front of you. Left foot reaches somewhere behind you, and you are twisted towards your right hand. You let the weight and the the weight in the hands and the weight of the foot just barely float off the ground and it falls. You're thinking of reaching them away from each other and then they fall. Excellent. Here's five. We ditch the weights. We let the left forearm go directly under the right forearm. We're still in that twisted position. That left leg that's behind you reaches off the ground. Five circles, one way, two, three, four, five, and then five, four, three, the other way, two, one, excellent. And then we come back to our mermaid position. We're gonna sit in that zigzag position. And remember, this is also something you could modify with a pillow underneath the right bum if you need to. We're gonna to go towards the left side first. Right arm goes up and over. Right shoulder, left shoulder, happy. Head just tilts. It does not fall forward. It stays right over the spine. Five of these, each side. Both arms get to have equal love. I'm on my third round coming up. Very nice. So to come out of it this time, let's see if we can go into a little teaser in the middle and we go to the other side. And if available, no hands, we're just gonna rock up, bring the legs out in front of us and bent leg teaser. And we roll back into that mermaid position. Curl back and then float your legs. Soften your chest as you lift up. Curl back to float your legs in tabletop. Soften your chest as you lift up. Last one. Last one to the left. Very nice. All right, so from there, we're gonna go on our hands and knees. From our hands and knees, it's a temporary break and a nice thing just to go into a couple of cat cows. So pop your back into a cat shape. Stick your chest out into cow shape. 
Oh gosh, that feels so good. Puffing into cat. Sticking your chest out into cow. Two more. Excellent. So now you're going to drag the left leg all the way down, drag the left right leg all the way down, lower all the way down onto your bellies. Reach for your hand weights somewhere in front of you if you feel like you want to use them. So you're all the way down on your belly for this next section. Now, here's a place where if you need something just to help open the front of the hip and to relieve some of the low back, put a blanket right at the top of your pubic bone area or the top of the thigh bone area in, that meets the abdominal basket. So that'll help decrease some of that low back tension. Your forearms are stacked one on top of each other and your forehead rests somewhere on top of the top hand. Pause there, take an inhale, release the shoulders. Exhale, take another inhale. Exhale, reach that right leg so far away that it floats off the ground. And then nothing changes. The knee barely lifts off the ground. You're just going to bend at the knee and release the knee and then let everything fall back down. So take a breath in. Exhale, reach that right foot and leg away. As the knee floats off, you bend from the knee. You lengthen from the knee. Let the leg and the knee lower down. Here we go. Three. And down. And four, we're just going to stick with the number five today, mainly because you guys know that I get lost sometimes. Five. <sighs> so crazy. I feel like my right foot's five inches longer than the left leg already. So here we go. Same love for the left side body. So we're going to reach that left foot off the ground. We're going to let that knee float off, bend from the knee. Lengthen from the knee, relax the foot and the leg all the way down. Reach, bend, reach, and relax. Here we go. Three. Four. And five. Excellent. So release everything back down. Going into a mini swan for a moment. So what does a mini swan look like? Your hands are going to go somewhere out to the sides as wide as you need it. Maybe go pose folded position because it'll come back to you. And your forehead is rested down on the ground. All you're going to do is think of the nose rolling a marble out in front of you. Let your eyes look slightly forward to the edge of your mat, perhaps, and that'll automatically float your chest and your throat off the ground, and you're in a mini swan, and then you're just going to relax everything back down. So a reminder, no need to clench your bum, no need to clench anything. So release everything. Let your low belly float up towards the breastbone. So your belly button is soft. Take an inhale. Exhale, let the nose roll the marble forward. Look up, or maybe you come up a little bit more, and we go back down. By the fifth one, you may go into a full swan if that's in your practice. Today, I'm not quite ready for a full swan, so I'm not headed there yet. And back down. So now I'm going to bring my forearms in front of me and lift up into the sphinx position for our single leg kick. So here I am, elbows are slightly in front of the shoulders, hands are out in line with the elbows, and I've got the low belly lifted, tail just soft and bum soft. And then from here, I'm going to bend my left leg, point the foot, flex the foot, point the foot back down, point, flex, point back down, alternating. Point, flex, point, and down. Point, bend, point, and down. Bending at the knee. And it's not how deep the knee bends. It's how well do you feel the bum meeting the thigh bone area help you to open the front of the hip 
here, because that's the whole purpose of the single leg kick. It's to give up the quads and the front of the psoas a nice soft release. It's working, but also releasing at the same time. Excellent. Last one, both sides. Very nice. Roll all the way down onto your belly. Double leg kicks coming up. You're going to let your left ear turn to the mat. Hands clasped at the clasped at the small of your back, if that's in your practice. Um, my thigh bones are not close to each other, but they're pretty close. They're not too far away from each other. From there, I'm going to bend at the knees, kick my bum three times, kick, 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 lengthen the legs, float my head, neck, and eyes, reach my hands that are clasped behind me off. And then I go to the opposite ear, bend, kick, kick, kick and float, two, three, left ear, two, three, and float, two, three, right ear, inhale, and exhale, and left ear, and right ear. Take a moment, let everything go. Sit back on your heels in child's pose. Very nice. So from child's pose, come all the way forward onto your kneeling push-up position. So you're still on your knees, tuck your toes under, and then take an inhale. Exhale, push up into your push-up position if that's in your practice. If not, one leg at a time. And then we go into our leg pull front. So we're gonna let that right leg lift up, kick, kick, and reach it back down. Left leg lifts up, kicks, kicks, and back down. The only kick, kick is as tiny as it needs to be. So the small of your back is not doing the work. It's all about that bum meeting, that thigh bone connection again. Similar to what we just did with the single leg kick on our bellies. Last one, both sides. And then let the knees lower down. Find your hands and knees position. Tiny break again. Exhale, curl into that cat shape. Inhale, stick your chest out into cow. Exhale, curl into cat. Inhale, stick your chest out into cow. Here we go. Cat shape. Sit back towards your feet. If that's available, come up to that tall position. Oh yeah, I feel quite different. We're gonna grab the hand weights again, go into some kneeling related work for a moment. So I'm gonna walk my hands forward just to grab the hand weights and meet you with tall kneeling position. So here we are, I might need to take another water break, by the way. I forget how much I talk. We don't have a long time left though, don't worry. So here I am on top of my knees, actually the shins. I've got my knees a little wider, my big toe side of the blade and my feet are kissing each other. Arms nice and long by my sides. I'm gonna let the arms just float off in front of me for a thigh stretch and hinge directly back and come forward, let the arms fall. So I'm using my weights as my counter balancing technique to keep the heart and chest lifted and lower. And I'm also thinking of that same small pelvic tilt to keep the small of my back happy. We have two more. Head, neck, ribs, shoulders, knees, all in one slanted position. Same line. Last one. Very nice. So we did not get to do our side kneeling kicks last time. That's where we're headed to because in the classical mat repertoire, there's also side kneeling series and it's so, so fun. Arms out to the sides, palms turned down with the hand weights if you've chosen to use the hand weights. We're gonna topple over onto our left side as we float the right leg off the ground, right arm reaches up to the sky or it comes back to support your head. We go into our right leg kick, kick, 
and kick kick. We're only going for three, by the way. And then bend that knee. Let the left hand push off to help you come all, all the way up to that tall kneeling position. Right arm comes back down by your side. I know, I already feel so different on the right side. It's so crazy. Arms out to the sides, palms are down. I'm gonna to toggle over towards the right side, go as far over, and then when I need to, I lower the right hand. The front of my right hip is happy. Left leg is long, left hand goes behind you to support your head. Elbow slightly forward, kick, kick forward, kick, kick back. Kick, kick forward, kick, kick back. Last one. Let the right hand push off, left arm goes out to the side as you come back up. Very nice, I hope it went well. So here we go, we're just gonna topple over side to side, arms out to the sides towards the T. We're gonna go over to the left side and as far over without landing and we come right back. That's it, three of those. I know this is a big challenge. We're almost done. Hang in there with me. Now we go to three for the other side. Very nice. We get to ditch the hand weights. Yay, everybody says. Here we go. One more opportunity for cat cow again. One more of these cat cows. Sit back towards your feet. Swing your legs out in front of you. Stretch the legs out in front of you. We're getting ready to go into leg pull back. Now for leg pull back, the hands can face forward. They can face out to the sides. They can face, the, the fingertips can face back behind you. Wherever you are, just remember to be kind to yourselves. I'm gonna let my hands face forward and it's a reverse plank position we're getting ready to go into. We're gonna point the toes and then exhale pelvic tilt to lift our hips off the ground and your eyesight hopefully is at the ceiling. Take a breath in, exhale, lift the right leg, kick, kick, and back down, lift the left leg, kick, kick, back down, right leg, kick, kick, back down, left leg, kick, kick, back down, right leg, kick, kick, left leg, kick, kick, and pause, lower back down. Woo, that was mean, wasn't it? I know. Here we go. So we have done all kinds of things so far, right? Last time we did not get to explore any of the rollover connection. So today we're gonna do a few of those, but we're gonna start with the pelvic lifting into bridging. Exhale, curl back, roll all the way down onto your back. Oh, arms come nice and long by the sides of your body. Right leg bends, right heel in front of your right bum. Left leg bends, left heel in front of your left bum. Exhale, pelvic tilt, peel your hips up into your bridge. Oh, and roll your way down. Oh, I feel so warm already. I hope you guys do too. Curve your tailbone, peel your hips up. You're pushing and pulling with your feet and softly rolling back down. On the next one, which is your third one, you're gonna stay in your bridge. Here's our bridge and we get to go into a little bit of shoulder bridge work, which is something that we didn't get to do last time. So here we go, right leg comes into tabletop, stretch that leg. Keep the bridge, right leg lowers as far down and you lift it back up, just three of those. We breathe whatever feels comfortable, the foot can stay in the flex position. And then we lower that right leg down, find your bridge if you need to, left leg comes into tabletop, you stretch and you lower and you lift. So it's an opportunity for each half of the pelvis to have a little different fun. And then we bend that leg, put that foot down, Roll your way down. Oh, how did it go? I hope well. I can hear you saying it went great, Vidya. All right, here we go. Right leg comes into tabletop. Left leg comes into tabletop. Both legs stretch up nice and long towards this side. Your hands are dragging towards the feet that were in front of you before they came off the ground. 
The back of the arms are pressing down on the earth. Collarbones are softly resting into the shoulder blades. You exhale, you let the legs fall towards your chest as you pelvic tilt and let just let your bum rock off and roll over. Just a little bunny hop first. If rollovers in your practice, here we go. The legs are glued together. We're roll up and over. We separate the legs, flex our feet, roll down gently, one vertebra at a time. Circle the legs slightly down and around. Let the legs separate this time. Roll up and over. Bring the legs toward each other. Flex your feet to roll back down. Skip this section if it's not comfortable for your neck. Do remember, just should not be about the neck. Open the legs again. We go into that wide rollover one more time. Bring the legs toward each other. Rolling back down. Right leg lowers all the way down. Left leg lowers all the way down. Arms float up towards the sky. Curl your head, neck, and shoulders forward. Roll your way all the way up. So we're so close to being done. I know we didn't get to go into jackknife, hip circles, lots of other fun stuff, but don't worry. Hopefully by the last week, which is you know coming up, we'll get it all in, right? Maybe I can speak a little faster. Bring the right leg as close to you. We're gonna use rolling like a ball. Actually, we're gonna go into seal puppy. So take the right arm inside your right knee. Let the left arm go inside your left knee. Right hand came around to the right foot. Left hand came around to the left foot. We clap, clap, clap the hand, the feet. Rock back, clap, clap, rock forward. Woo! And clap, 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 clap. Clap, clap, last one. Rock back. Maybe you release and you come all the way up to standing. Excellent. We stand at the back edges of our mat. We're going to finish up with push ups. I know it has been a tough class. Don't worry. I understand that. Arms up to the sky. Take a breath in. And exhale forward, fold. Let the weight of your head dangle down for a moment. Shake your head, yes. Shake your head, no. And then walk your hands out into your plank to end with our push-ups. I know we didn't get to go into control balance either. Don't worry. Some of these things we will get to do someday soon. Take a breath in. Exhale. Pull the earth as you go into push-up. You're pulling the earth towards your body. And you're pushing the earth away from your body. Pulling and pushing. Pulling and pushing. I don't care how many. We just have three left if you want to go for three more. And then take your hips up and back into downward dog. Walk your feet to your hands or your hands to your feet, whatever you choose to do. Let your head dangle again. Shake it yes. Shake it no. Roll your way all the way up. Voila. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this class as much as I did. Have a great day. I'll see you next week.